Greetings everyone, my name is Sai, and I'm willing to bet there are a few things you didn't know about Skyrim. Let's play a game with this video. If you learn one new thing, I want you to give this video a like. But if you already knew all 10 facts, I want you to leave a dislike guilt-free. Because if you already knew everything, that means I didn't do my job properly. Also, this video will be spoiling the entire game, so you have been warned. So without further ado, here are 10 things you didn't know about Skyrim. Number 10. For this video's number 10 slot, let's start off with something a bit more personal. Like, for a sake of example, you. Did you know that you can go into the console command and type in the code on the screen right now and an NPC of you will appear? They don't say anything or do all that much to be honest, but there are a few little neat tricks you can pull if you'd like. For example, if you happen to be the world's biggest narcissist, you can marry yourself. Just follow the instructions on screen right now, and then ask your clone to marry you. As you can see, here's our wedding, there's me, and my beautiful wife of course, me, and of course all my best friends are also in attendance. Like for example, this drug addict, and um, me, again. Hopefully I'm not the jealous type. But unfortunately for me, after about 10 seconds of this happy marriage, I decided that I needed more freedom from me, so I killed me. Hmm. That got weird really quickly. Oh well, moving on. Number 9. Bethesda sure does love their celebrity voice actors, seeing as they use them so much. But at the same time, they know how to characterize them properly, so they don't feel out of place. For example, Mercer Frey, the leader of the Thieves' Guild, is voiced by Stephen Russell, who is also the voice of Garrett, the protagonist of the Thief series. Another example that blew my mind is that Parthunax is voiced by Charles Martinet, who you'd probably know better as the voice of Mario. <laughs> I'm sorry, but now I cannot stop imagining Parthenac saying all his lines in a really bad Italian accent. Oh, I know I must get to the Elder Scroll and save all of the Skyrim. Number eight. So you may notice that after you help the Imperial Legion beat the Stormcloaks, that that one really annoying priest dude inside Whiterun suddenly disappears. I mean, that makes sense, of course, because the Legion outlawed Talos worship, but what actually happened to the old priest? Well, if you head up onto the White One prison, you'll find him in his cell, still shouting to his heart's content. And okay, before you all berate me in the comments, yes, this one is kind of cheating. It's a change added by the unofficial Skyrim patch, so usually that means I wouldn't include it, but let's be honest here, if you're playing Skyrim on PC, 99% of the time you'll be using the unofficial patch. So that's my justification. Now you can berate me in the comments. Number 7. So this one may seem a little obvious to some, and I fully realize that, but hear me out on this, because I think most people really underappreciate just how deep this rabbit hole goes. So did you know that Bethesda created their own language for dragons? Now if you've played the game, you'll know that to some extent. I mean, Dova means dragon, Kazal means Skyrim, etc. And we can see dragons using these same words for these same meanings at various points. So it's pretty clear that dragon voice actors weren't speaking complete gibberish, right? But Bethesda, more likely than not, only made a few fake words for what was needed. The dragon language consists of maybe 50 or 60 words max, right? Wrong! When I say they made a language for dragons, I mean they made an entire freaking language for dragons. As in, more than 500 words with different grammar rules and everything. Heck, if you're interested, there are even some websites that specialize in translating English into Dovazul, or dragon speech. So yeah, massive props to Bethesda for pulling off that Herculean feat. Number 6. Everyone, it is now time for the usual small but interesting trivia bit, which I guess is now a segment. 
Whenever you come across a mineral deposit, you can press E to begin mining it. But, did you know that you can actually equip your pick like a weapon and hit the deposit to achieve the same effect? Also a bit of a bonus here, you can use the Elemental Fury Shout to mine it even faster than it would normally. Now, I don't know how much use you'll get out of knowing this, because personally I tend not to bother with mining and just buy my minerals instead with all the thousands of gold I have stored away, but hey, the more you know, right? Number 5 So here's a question I'd be interested in hearing the answer to. How many of you actually bothered with a Civil War questline? I mean, personally, the Civil War was by far the least interesting part of the Skyrim lore for me, so until a few weeks ago, I had never so much as even started it. And indeed, aside from the Siege of Whiterun, which was admittedly pretty cool, the rest of it was just, go here, kill a bunch of dudes, repeat. Again, I'm curious how much of you actually bothered with the quest. Tell me in the comments, I'm interested in knowing. Anyways, the real highlight of that quest for me isn't even the quest itself. It's a part of the main storyline. Did you know that if you kill Ulfric Stormcloak as part of the Civil War questline, you can meet him again in Sovereign Guard as part of the main questline? I think it's a pretty cool little bit of continuity on Bethesda's part. Number 4 So as we all know, Skyrim is so chock full of pop culture references and jokes that I'm pretty sure it would take a team of people working around the clock to find them all inside of a century. So listing off every last one of them is impossible. But I can tell you my three personal favorites that I've run across. First is in Rebrel's Karen, where you can find a sword sticking out of a stone, which is in reference to the King Arthur legend. Second is you can find a glacier east of the Frostfoe Lighthouse, where a mammoth has been frozen inside. Another interesting thing to point out about this is that the arrows appear to be Dwemer made. And third is that in the Bleak Coast Cave, you can find a skeleton stuck from the ceiling, and below it a glowing sword, which obviously references the Empire Strikes Back. Number three. So, if you played Oblivion before you played Skyrim, I'm willing to put money down right now that one of the first things you did when you got the game was look up how to start the Dark Brotherhood questline. Because, holy shit, the Oblivion version was that amazing! But, in the abandoned shack where you first start the quest, did you know that you can actually kill Astrid to begin a completely different questline? After killing her and freeing the people she trapped, you go report to Commander Morrow, and thus begins the quest, Destroy the Dark Brotherhood. You raid the Dark Brotherhood Sanctuary, and kill everyone inside. Commander Morrow will reward you with 3,000 gold, and you never hear from the Brotherhood again. Number 2 Speaking of the Dark Brotherhood, after finishing up their questline and moving into a new sanctuary, you can pay Delvin Mallory to install all kinds of things with the money you get for killing the Emperor. One of these things is a torture chamber, and will cost you about 5,000 gold. While this may seem exorbitant for such a useless feature, I would highly recommend getting it if you're interested in long-term investments. You see, the torture victims aren't just a useless set decoration. If you, well, torture them, then they will actually give you information as to the location of gold they have hidden away somewhere. These stashes usually net you anywhere from 1,000 to 2,000 gold a pop. Now, I'm the kind of nice person that would release them after they tell me what I want to know, but unfortunately, the game has no way to do that, so I decided to reward them by ending their suffering as quickly as possible. Which means that soon another NPC will be brought in and hung up, and the cycle can repeat. And as long as you're willing to overlook how sadistic the whole thing is, it's a great way to make some extra cash. And the number one thing you didn't know about Skyrim is... So now we arrive at my favorite part of these videos, the number one spot, where I have to really impress you. And whereas all the other trivia in this video were hidden by being inaccessible, hard to find, or just things people wouldn't really think to check, the number one spot of this video is something that's been hiding in plain sight from you since the very first moment you started playing Skyrim. They're called Shadow Marks. 
Shadow marks are a method for the Thieves Guild members to discreetly mark houses to communicate messages to all other thieves. For example, a diamond with a circle inside means it is a guild location. An upside-down triangle warns of danger and means that thieves might want to steer clear of the area. A box with stripes inside means there is loot in the building, whereas a box with no stripes has been looked over by the guild and has been deemed empty. There are also marks for pointing out escape routes, fences for selling stolen goods, that a certain area is under guild protection, or has a cash inside. Almost every city has these marks hidden in plain sight within them, and all it took to find them was to open your eyes. So everyone, that was 10 things you didn't know about Skyrim, and I hope you enjoyed it. Remember to leave a thumbs up if you learned something new, and of course thumbs down if you already knew everything, because if that's the case, then I didn't do my job properly. Also, I've got more 10 TYDK videos coming very soon, and I want you all to see them. So how about clicking that nice subscribe button? I'd really appreciate it. Also, I've noticed that we're running a Patreon campaign at the moment to help support the channel growing into the future, and I'd be really thankful to anyone who had the spare change to help out. Anyways, that's about it. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Later.